eyes like an Olsen twin. So when I uh, when I work these bad boys out, that's a lot of muscle. It's a lot of pain. <laughs> Poor baby. I'm old and broken. Welcome to Attack of the Show, everybody. Uh, the TV's only source for all the stuff you care about. I'm Kevin Pereira. On the show today, Chris Gore is here for DV Tuesday. Yay! He's going to review the claustrophobic thriller Buried and Australian crime drama Animal Kingdom. Good day. Ace Tolsonetta, Colts on the Bobby. That was good. That was Australian. That was amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Plus, Allison Hayslip swims with the sharks. Literally. Uh, she went to Hawaii on vacation, and we tossed her into an underwater shark cage. Yay! We're kind of jerks like that. Then we sent Alex Simwise to explore a sex hotel Hello. in Tokyo. Because we thought you might be interested in that. Yes, ma'am. And today's gadget, gadget prawn is Toshiba's new 3D gaming laptop. Your video games or amateur movies will enter the third dimension for less than 1100 bucks. Oh. <laughs> Time now to run down the top five things. I didn't actually well. do we can we don't have to do but it's fine. Go around the net. <laughs> Actually, no. You can't actually cross the, You can do it in front. You can't stick it inside. No, I mean, you could go. I, can we do? Can we get away with that? Is that allowed or this? We can't. Oh, I heard no. Well, we showed it. Uh, <laughs> in a number five today, a clip from this weekend's Golden Globe ceremony where actress Natalie Portman picked up the trophy for Best Actress. Congrats. And while Miss Portman may be a classy winner in the acting category, when it comes to laughing with dignity, she's definitely a loser. Mm. <laughs> I think I was laughing at her own joke, too. Was she? <laughs> oh, God, no, not you, too. That, that's like, there goes an entire wall of my spank bank. Oh. oh. <sighs> well, I, I surely hope the B. Arthur section is still holding oh, up. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, that section is still golden. Black Swan, I can never trust her with an erection again. <laughs> I can't. She's banned. Black Swan? Yeah. It has some parts in it. Well, believe she me. Believe be me. It has to. some parts. And I was like, sweet, we're going somewhere. And then it twists yeah. to something unholy. <laughs> Ew. Sorry. Today's number four item comes to us from one of the internet's most distinctive webcam singers, the woman known only as U8A22. Yes, for her next masterpiece. She's chosen not the Michael Jackson mega hit Beat It, but the high pitched <laughs> Chipmunks rendition of that song. What? Enjoy. <laughs> if you can. <laughs> has equal sway on Twitter, too. That's the scary thing. Catch her every week at Costco, folks. She performs there. Yeah, uh, man. She does. Now, most people, didn't, most people didn't make it two minutes and 30 seconds into that video, but I did. Mm -hmm. And here's what happens. <laughs> you can say a lot about that video, but that guitar solo... Totally guitarded. Guitarded! We had to justify the making the graphic last week, so we thought we'd get it in this way. You totally did. Well done. Justified. Uh, apparently, there's a daytime TV talk show for older ladies that's not called The View. I was unaware. What? But there is one, yes. Yeah, it's actually called The Talk. Mm. And recently, to the apparent horror of most of the program's panelists, a contestant from a child beauty pageant performs live on the show. Yeah. Terrifying. But thankfully, <laughs> YouTuber Adelaide Underground slowed the offending clip down to create a wonderful new piece of art called Drunken Slurring Dwarf Sings Cutie Patootie. <laughs> Thanks, 
see Sharon Osbourne look confused because she sounded just like Ozzy to me. <laughs> exact same. But the good news, if there is some... That video was much less uncomfortable than it would have been if it had been played at full speed. Exactly. Oh. So you're welcome. <laughs> One of the questions that everybody's been asking me is, what's it like behind the scenes of Attack of the Show? Mm. Well, today's number two is a pretty good example of what a typical day is like. All right, so here's the thing. Uh, <laughs> during our read-through last week, I was having a fun game of catch, uh, a, a wall run and jump game mm -hmm. of catch, specifically, with a supervising producer who shall remain named Brian Terwilliger, was the, uh, <laughs> the producer. And uh, another producer, Jeremy, became concerned that we were going to break a window, so we decided to film it. Um, here's a spoiler. I did not break a window. Hey, what's up, guys? Sweet meeting. <laughs> Kudos to Jerry. Amazing. Amazing. That was the best thing. Moment ever. The moment my foot went through the wall, like a lot ran through my head, slowly seeping past the bong resin. But Jerry hopped up at the table and was like, I got it. Don't go I anywhere. Know what to do. And boom. Where he had that photo of you, I don't know. I don't either. Why he had it. He, um, he got it very quickly, too. And it just dawned on me that. I haven't told facilities. I don't think you have. No, but I think they know. <laughs> Sorry, Papa Comcast. <laughs> Still ahead, the greatest fist fight in sports history. from a recent Hooper Ball match between the Cavalry of Cleveland and the Utah Music Notes. Right. Here's the scene. During a break in the game, Utah's mascot started bothering a Cleveland fan, and the guy apparently <laughs> took it very seriously. Uh, and it just uh, gets better from there. What's more embarrassing than getting beaten up by a guy in an animal costume? Um, getting beaten up by a guy in an animal costume in front of a stadium full of people? <laughs> That's correct, yes, that is correct. To get your daily viral fix and to check out all the viral videos we have to offer, go to g4tv.com slash around the net. It's a great little website. You'll love it. It is. Uh, Candace, I know I don't need to say it. I said it all last week, but really, you have been a... Uh, well, just such a welcome addition to the Attack of the Show family. Yeah. That, um, You're softening me up for a visit from the drunk uncle, aren't you? I, I touch my nose and point at you. Oh, I do, I do it. I, <laughs> yes. Hey, offenders. Attack of the Show posted my bail and sent me to Penis Beach, California. To offer people sex advice. So strap on your rollerblades and let down your speedos. <laughs> this is Sex Man on the Beach. So I just moved to LA from a really conservative city in Oklahoma, uh -huh. but I don't really know how to date here and how to act. So what should I do? First of all, welcome to California. My name is George Clooney. And I am the mayor of Hollywood. And I have a production company, Windowless Van Films. I can already tell you've got what it takes to be a star in my movie. First thing we gotta do is get me out of these pants. You're not wearing pants. Ha! <laughs> See? We're already clicking. <laughs> 
This is the start of a beautiful relationship. Me and you are going to be going places, but not within a thousand feet of a church or a school. I'll explain on the way. Like I always say, if I can touch just one person down there, it's been worth it. Everything else is just the sauce from that. I'll see you next time, because I'm in your... Two things happen. One, new DVDs appear in your local video emporium. And two, Chris Gore shows up and rubs his dirty paws all over them. Aww. Welcome back, film yeah. expert yeah. Chris Gore. Yeah. Hey. Hey. It's my dirty paws. Oh, is that okay? So they're clean. Not a you? They're clean for now. Oh. Until we get started. Okay, what's up first? Uh, first, we have uh, Buried. Yeah. Now, yeah. I didn't like this film. Ryan Reynolds in a box for 90 minutes. Uh, am I missing something? Uh, I don't know. It sounds like it could be on a WTF segment. But, uh, yeah. but, but first of all, this is a, an unbelievable thriller. It's just Ryan Reynolds oh, okay. in this box. Okay, unbelievable. I don't know about unbelievable. It's, exactly. <laughs> but, uh, but what's amazing is just, it's disturbing. I mean, I have to say, I thought, oh, I started watching this at night. I thought, I am too creeped out. I mean, if you're prone to claustrophobia, you mm -hmm, should not watch this movie. Yeah, yeah, you shouldn't watch it at night. So I respect the fact that you didn't like it. I thought it was amazing because so compelling. It's one guy in a box for an hour and a half with a cell phone and somehow it's it's like an incredible action movie. So okay. uh, I was uh, over the moon, loved it. Okay, I think you're giving it way too much hype. But I will say this. It, I will did, say make, this. it did make no. me really anxious the entire time and it made me want to jump off a building. No, I, I was really disturbed by it. I think I, think I was the, disturbed by it too, but I thought it was awful. The last film I was this <laughs> disturbed by was Human Centipede, so I think that's saying something. But, but what's cool is, what's cool is, is that if Ryan Reynolds had his Green Lantern ring, this movie would be like 30 seconds long. It'd be like, I'm in a box, power of punching out of a box. Uh, it's you know, like that's real it. life if you're buried in a box. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Awful. So, so what do you think of the extras? Uh, the extras were cool. They really showed, like, the one thing is they shot this movie over 18 days. You think it's in a box. How long can it take to shoot? 18 days. I mean, there are people who go in for those MRI scans that, that can't sit there for 15 minutes. He had to be in that yeah. box for 18 days. I and one of, the, one of the boxes was called a 360 where they had a camera in it, and he was, he was sealed in the box. So yeah. it was amazing to see how they pulled this thing off, this lo-fi film. Okay. So what's the bottom line? Bottom line is buy it, and I'm saying that because I highly recommend this thriller. Oh, yeah. It'll freak your friends out. If I were Chris Moore right now, I'd be saying pass. Okay. But. <laughs> right. So what do we have next? Uh, next we have Animal Kingdom. Now, Australia isn't exactly known for its crime dramas, but this film could change that. Uh, you know what? I always think it's cute when other countries try to do crime dramas. Look, in the United States, we are the king of crime dramas and crime. Godfather, good fellows of this history. Look, I grew up uh, in Detroit, so trust me, I, I know from... But this thing is really good. I mean, it, they, they really... I mean, it's set in the suburbs, but mm -hmm. it's, it's brutal. I mean, this, this, this sort of cr small crime family is trying to find the rat, and it, it's disturbing. I mean, the violence is really just catches you by surprise, so I quite enjoyed it. Surprised okay. by it. Bottom line? Bottom line is rent it. Uh, okay. Definitely worth seeing. All right. All definitely right. worth seeing. Cool. Now, what else do we have to check out? Uh, the virginity hit. Ah, this comedy seems like what would happen if we gave the viewers a camera in uh, a month and asked them to document their efforts to have sex. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> uh, they're failed efforts, perhaps. But, I mean, it's all, I mean, this is a classic genre, you know, like, yeah. bunch of guys, and we're all going to lose our virginity, which also spawned another TV genre, Teen Mom. Shows like Teen Mom, I think, oh. came no, from, I don't know. from I don't think so. movies like this. But, uh, look, it's, I mean, I, I love the attempt. I think they were trying to do a lo-fi version, but uh -huh. it was very derivative of other things we've seen, like American Pie and whatnot. Yeah. So, no, I, so I feel like I've seen this. And also, I have to go on a little rant about this film for a second. The cast is really good, but there are constant references to you. YouTube. Dear movies, stop referencing YouTube in movies. All it reminds me of is I could be watching YouTube and it's free. I mean, kick ass, uh, the last couple years, we've seen so many movies reference YouTube. Wow, we just, just got him hot and bothered. I'm mad. Stop. <laughs> just make a movie of a, a movie, not YouTube in the movie. Yes, so, I know uh, exactly. Look. Bottom line, Chris? Bottom line is, I'm going to say pass. Oh, but, see, and I would say at but, least rent this. Uh, but I like the cast. I think that they're a uh, great up-and-coming cast. Uh, they need to be in a better movie. Okay. Yeah. All right. We disagree again. Yes. There <laughs> we, we go. We've got time for a quick pick. Oh, good. Uh, quick pick this week, Skins Volume 4 is out. Um, if you were as disappointed as I was in MTV, 
TV's uh, American Incarnation. This is the real Brit version. Um, oh, okay, so this is the original. This is the original British show. Uh, and that's awesome. Awesome. Because I don't really I have know to anything check it about out. it. Oh, you totally should check it out. I'm going to let you steal that. All right. It's all Maybe yours to take. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Great. Thank you. <laughs> And now back to Mr. Kevin. Who were you miming there, dude? What, what was that at the end? My palms are clean. Oh. They're clean. Uh, for now. Ew, I don't know that I want this. <laughs> They've been clean since 87. Still ahead, Alex Simwise dresses like a Japanese schoolgirl and heads to the seedy side of Tokyo. Hey, don't, don't worry, don't worry. It'll somehow be educational. <laughs> Toot. <laughs> And later, Allison puts on a bikini and tries not to get eaten by sharks. You're about to see a whole lot more of Hayslip, so stick around! Keep it classy. Hello, everybody. Welcome back! Yes, hi. hi. Um, we're going to give you guys some news right now, and guess what? It's going to cost you nothing. It's free. Oh. Here's Sarah Underwood with the latest. Thanks, guys. It's time to start the feed. It's Tuesday, January 18th, and here are your top stories. Steve Jobs has decided to take a leave of absence to focus on his health. This will mark the second leave in about a year for Jobs, who's a pancreatic cancer survivor and had a liver transplant in 2009. No details have emerged regarding exactly why he's taking time off or when he'll return, but he is still staying on as CEO and will take part in major strategic decisions. As a result of the news, the infamous fake Steve Jobs has decided to officially sign off Twitter and respect Jobs' request for privacy. Of course, we wish Mr. Jobs well. Two hackers have been charged with stealing email addresses and other personal data of over 100,000 3G iPad owners on AT&T's network. The individuals are being charged with one count of fraud and one count of conspiracy to access a computer without authorization and using brute force in an attack on AT&T servers last June. The attack allegedly compromised the personal data of people like Diane Sawyer and former Chief of Staff Ram Emanuel, which they handed over to Valleywag. The pair of hackers are members of the internet anarchist Goat C Security <laughs> and insist that exposing such gaping security holes are in the public's interest. And I guess thanks for your public service, guys. <laughs> Earlier today, the FCC voted to allow Comcast, the parent company of yours truly, G4, E versus and the Golf Channel to acquire NBC Universal. Yeah. Now the cable company has a controlling interest in a movie and TV studio and a broadcast network. <laughs> and now I can drive Knight Rider to work. <laughs> <laughs> vote was four to one with one dissenting commissioner expressing concerns that a single company would own the content and the delivery pipes. <laughs> you said pipes. Beep, beep. Mm. <laughs> nobody, nobody can stop. Get a hold of him, please. <laughs> Moving on. A scientist in Japan is trying to bring the woolly mammoth back to life. <laughs> yes. Dr. Akira Iritani of Ky Kyoto University has announced his plans to extract DNA from a chunk of frozen mammoth skin and inject it into the egg of an African elephant. Oh, of yeah. yeah, okay, makes total sense. Because previous attempts to genetically engineer the prehistoric beast have failed, but utilizing a new technique, Iritani says he should be able to produce a living woolly mammoth by 2016. At this point, there are no plans to extract dinosaur DNA from fossilized sap and open a theme park on an island, but that doesn't stop me from doing this. <laughs> And finally, it's time for the Fark.com story of the day. Hooray. If you signed on to eBay this morning, you could have picked up some cheap RAM, an iconic Christmas sweater, and the identity of one of the most infamous street artists in the world, Banksy. Someone put a piece of paper supposedly containing the artist's real name on eBay and started the bidding at $3,000. By late this morning, the price was approaching $1 million before it was removed from the auction site for unknown reasons. Darn it, I want to know who this guy is. Banksy has somehow managed to keep his identity a secret. 
despite holding high-profile art shows, directing an elaborate Simpsons couch gag, and making the documentary exit through the gift shop. I mean, I don't know what's up with this guy. He must have some sort of cloaking device or something, right? Sarah, so, Sarah, real quick, uh, not cloaking device related. You're ten kinds of adorable. But thank you. What's with the, 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 the mono earring? Is that a new style thing that I'm missing from the Globes? Or? Oh, I got my hole closed up, and I couldn't get it in. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for noticing, though. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I heard, and I'm. Oh. <laughs> my earring hole. Right, guys. right, right. Of course, of course, earring. Oh my gosh, I'm done. <laughs> you guys have just been fat. Of course. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> with a, oh, yeah, I wouldn't have a chance in the world. It's all right. No. <clears throat> Most people go to Hawaii to drink cocktails, sunbathe, and hopefully have sex with someone or something. Yes, but not Allison Hayslip. She went there to reenact Jaws. <laughs> Alright, you guys don't believe me that G4 is trying to kill me, but there are sharks in the water. Right now, and I'm supposed to get in there. Holy crap! Dude! I did not sign up for this. So what is the deal with shark adventure? Why would people want to swim with sharks? The word shark in general is scary as it is, and to be able to go in a cage and actually swim with a shark, that conquers a lot of people's fears. What kind of sharks are these? These are all Galapagos sharks. They range anywhere from 8 to 12 feet. Uh, the males are the smaller ones. They get, you know, 8, 9 feet max. The females will max out at about 13 feet. Right now is their mating season, so a lot of the females you see in the water are actually pregnant females. Oh, great. I bet they're really angry then. Some trips we could have two, some trips we could have 30. It all depends on the season and basically what the sharks feel like doing. What's my best defense against a shark? Smile. Ah! <laughs> Charm them. <laughs> All right, G4, this may be the last time you ever see me. I'm about to become shark food. went under, I kind of looked to my left, and there was a shark swimming straight at me and just came right up to the cage and then swam away. So there were definitely moments where the sharks were very aggro. They got like right up in my face in the cage. Is that normal? Sharks cannot sleep, so they can't stop swimming. They constantly have to swim all the time. During the daytime is their relaxing period. They ain't got nothing else better to do. They ain't got no kids, no grocery shopping. Basically, they're just hanging out. I can't believe sharks don't sleep. I'd be really angry if I never slept. Guys, I have survived yet another badass encounter. I mean, sharks, seriously? What's it take to impress you? Heaven knows what they're gonna throw at me next. Ah, you guys, producers got a note of that? We good? Yeah. All right, yeah, good idea, great idea. Scary. Hey, I have an even better idea. What do you got? It's way better to receive than it is to give. Uh -huh. That's why we invented Epic Giveaways. Green Hornet collectible signed by Seth Rogen. Yes, and the winners are Jared C. of Bosque Farms, New Ooh. Mexico. Congrats. And Nathan D. of East Syracuse. What up? Yay. That's New York, folks. Congratulations. Woo! And today, you have the chance to win a DVD collection from 20th Century Fox Ooh. Home Entertainment, including the Family Guy trilogy, Star Wars episodes on DVD. 24, the complete series, all eight seasons, Futurama, Whoa. Volume 5, and Archer Season 1. Yes. Plus, you're also going to receive this Yaw Family Guy poster signed by the cast, including Whoa. Seth MacFarlane, Mila Kunis, Seth Green, and a name that we can't figure out at all. Uh, could be Adam <laughs> West, Patrick Warburton. Uh, you'll probably never know. Uh, so congrats in advance. <laughs> 
G4TV.com slash epic giveaway. Get your entry in between now and January 19th by 3 p.m. Eastern to be eligible. We'll announce a winner right here on tomorrow's show. Uh, and so instead of luck. instead of using packing peanuts, uh, we have an innovative new mm. thing. We're going to use these old cell phone props <laughs> from our old set to, to seal your prize. So congrats. <laughs> <laughs> so glad those are gone. Um, I like now, them. Usually when a show is off the air for a while, somebody is in rehab or getting their cans done. But not this time, <laughs> folks. X-Play's been recharging for a huge 2011. Yeah! It's time to attack this beer stuff. Okay. In the future, when society collapses and we're all growing our own food in gardens atop mega city sky rises, remember, you're gonna need to brew your own beer too. Yeah. But why not start now? This basic brewing kit from Northern Brewers includes all the bells and whistles that you need to cook up your own rocket sauce. If you're a little intimidated by all the chemistry, worry not. It comes with an instructional DVD that shows you every step of the process to ensure that your drunk ass doesn't mess things up. Yeah. Open up your own brewery for only 80 bucks. <laughs> so now that you've got your own vat of your own brand of brewski, why not serve it with a system that pours beer upside down? What? What you're seeing is no magic or camera shenanigans. Beer flows into the glass from the bottom up. And this specially designed magnetic system isn't just cool to look at. It pours beer nine times faster than normal taps and was actually used to set a world record of pouring 56 pints in a single minute. The high-tech system doesn't come cheap, but slap this fancy contraption in your home bar and you'll give the world the greatest gift of all, confused drunk people. And finally, we all love kicking back and having a few cold ones, but getting up from the couch to get another beer is hard work. So if the drudgery of standing up and sitting back down is just too much for you, you'll be interested in this personal beer robot. Now it won't walk and talk or deliver your beverage on a silver platter, but what it will do is launch you your choice of beer from across the room right into your hands. It even uses a camera and special iPhone app to choose from one of three beers and determine its trajectory. The hero of humanity who designed this masterpiece says he's considering bringing it to market pending some tweaks to his design. Fingers crossed. Head on over to g4tv.com slash AOTS for info on all of these beer stuff and more. Stay tuned. We've got a 3D gaming laptop on Gadget Pod. I'm sure the DOA volleyball fans will be thrilled. Rock it. Get your glasses on! Yes, all three of you that have 3D TVs. It's 3D Gaming Laptop Week on Gadget Pro! <laughs> Bullets and boobies. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that they look way more awesome when they're floating out of the screen right in your face. You know what I'm saying? Thanks, Toshiba! 2011 will be the year of 3D, and Toshiba is getting a jump on the action with the satellite 3D V5 laptop. With NVIDIA's built-in vision technology, all you have to do is put on the glasses and you'll be thrust into the amazing world of 3D gaming. Plus, the Intel Core i5 processor, NVIDIA GTS 350M graphics, and four gigs of RAM mean everything plays silky smooth for 1,050 bucks. Uh, unrealistic, that laptop would have burnt up in the hemisphere. Mm, no. And never survive re-entry. Mm. <laughs> like your glasses, push up. Yeah, with my 3D glasses, because they're awesome. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I'd look, I'd like to look super sweet for this segment. Yes, yeah, sexy! They call me Deltron. <laughs> now, as 3D gaming laptops go, this one is pretty sleek. It's about an inch and a half thin. It weighs just over six pounds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how easy is it going to be to take this to your mini LAN parties? Pretty sweet when I'm rocking the LAN parties with a bunch of dudes. <laughs> um, you do, don't um, you? Yeah, it's not that bad, actually. The, this kind of carbon, carbon fiber-esque look on the back, mm -hmm. I, I don't mind at all. It gives it a decent texture and kind of hides some of the, like most the of the smudges. Of it. Yeah, it's got a good feel. Uh, keyboard is uh, nice and spaced. I, I'm tired of 
example of like the NASCAR 500 badging badging that they do on these laptops. Like, I get it. It's got four million things in it. One sticker, guys. One sticker. Other than that, totally fine. Now, in addition to playing games, it's a productivity laptop, too. So will the keyboard and touchpad work for both modes? Uh, believe it or not, yes, they yeah. will. Oh. Yeah, the touchpad is multi-touch, so you can pinch, zoom, and rotate through all your productivity apps. I don't know if you're pinch and zooming Excel or uh, PowerPoint, but why not? Um, it's not as seamless as Apple's trackpads, but not much is. Uh, the keyboard takes a little getting used to since the keys, they give a little easy. Um, we like a little more pushback as guys in our personal lives and from our keyboards. Um, and the keys aren't backlit either, contrary to what Toshiba's website says. So keep that in mind. Okay. Now, one thing that we notice is that your wrist rests right over the touchpad when you're, uh, when you're gaming. When you're gaming, yeah, it does. Thankfully, there is a, uh, yes, there's a little button right on top. You can smack it, and it'll turn off the touchpad oh, so you won't accidentally move the mouse and frag your friends. Um, overall, it was a pleasure to game on, even for long periods of time. So kudos, Toshiba. But the most important question is how did gaming look on it? It looks really good. Oh, good. Uh, shouldn't have a problem running any game that's out right now, even in 3D. Um, keep in mind, you won't be able to max out the settings completely, but the 3D transmitter, this is what I love. It's actually built into the laptop. So all you need is the glasses, and you're ready to go. Um, we, you know, Normally, you'd have to carry around like a little USB add-on, mm -hmm. a little uh, transmitter. It's right in there. And this thing even plays 3D Blu-rays, which is a nice touch. Holla! It's only 1050 bucks at Walmart.com. So what are we giving it? We're giving it a 4 out of 5, uh, even at that price. It's the most affordable 3D gaming laptop we've ever reviewed. Um, it's not quite as fast as we'd want a gaming laptop to be, but it's still a great choice. All right, that's it for Gadget Prawn. And remember, for even more of the latest news on computers and tech, check out g4tv.com slash the feed. In Tokyo, <laughs> people go to the kinky sex hotels to get their freak on. Yes, but for Alex Simwise, a visit to a Japanese love palace is just another day at the office. If your office has themed sex rooms. Then... I'm pretty sure ours does. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh. Okay, so if you're in Japan and you fancy yourself a discreet quickie, uh, then you can come to one of these love hotels for what they call a rest. Yeah, right, okay. So uh, let's go and have a look and uh, see what it's all about. Fun. Due to financial limitations, many people in Japan live at home, making privacy a hard thing to come by. That makes love hotels the perfect refuge for the desperately horny. Now we're at the Alpha Inn and uh, it's quite exemplary of uh, most love hotels in that it's got loads of different themed rooms. Now you can rent these places by the hour, so it ranges from about $100 to $200 depending on the room. And if you want it for longer, it costs like $40 extra per night. If you look over here, we have uh, loads of different themed costumes that you can order from your room, like room service. Okay, everybody, what do you think? I've gone for the uh, classic Japanese schoolgirl look. Nice. Now, let me show you around. You've got, you know, a little sitting around area, TV to watch some porn on, big bed with four pillows, bizarrely, just in case you want to have a party, uh, mirrors, tissues. Always got to need some tissues. There's a big window into the bathroom, so whatever's going on in there, you can just watch it. No privacy in this room whatsoever. Don't look at me, don't look at me! Okay, so over there we've got normal things. Now through here is where the theme kicks in. And we've got ourselves a fully stocked dungeon. Oh my God, isn't this great? Oh my God, I don't know where to start. Like, what does all this stuff do? This looks like a bow flex. Seriously, I don't know what else this could be used for. It looks like gym equipment. Like Sarah Connor machine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I'm still on the floor. This is for the uh, cowboy fetishists out there, you know? Ride them, horsey. Hey! This one moves! Oh my god! No! Ah! Wow. Uh, pretty graphic. <laughs> we have uh, handcuffs and blindfolds as standard, along with whips. What would the dungeon be without a whip, hey? Uh, we have a, a paddle. These are for uh, spanking. And uh, pegs! Yeah, we're not going to be doing any washing, but I think... Yeah. They're going to throw loads of smarties at me. It's going to be awesome. When you take away the sense of sight, it can make you feel a little bit disorientated, but I know you guys are there. You're there for me. It's fine. Ooh. OK, so this is the last thing, and this is my favourite thing. It may look like a cat transporter, but it's actually a, a human cage. So I'm going to uh, try it out for size and uh, see if I can fit in it. Yeah. 
Oh my god, I think I've gone in it the wrong way. All right, guys, I'm ready to get out of here. It's really cramped. I don't like it. It smells funny. Uh, guys, you're going to let me out, right? Guys? Seriously? You can't leave me in here. Are you serious? Oh, my God, let me out. Pretty hot, but listen, I've had to dress up as an Asian schoolgirl for work several times, and uh, yeah. I mean, Kevin, you look so. Go on. I don't know. Pick any adjective, and it'll probably offend me. I don't even Just know what. Pick that one. Is. It was proper. I looked fantastic. I looked like the chick from The Ring. That was messed up. I don't know. You guys could have photoshopped me on Sailor Moon or anything, but that. That was yeah. Look at that. Oh God. That's like that's gonna give me nightmares tonight. <laughs> and your face is so creepy. Could this guy? Hey, look! So it looks like someone's been sexting our Twitter. Oh, bar. Magic Steve's been in here. Uh, let's see. Angel Meko says eating dinner alone, watching AOTS. Oh well, at least I have AOTS and would take AOTS over sex any day. Aww. If you're watching this show, sex probably isn't on the menu for you. I don't think that's. I'm not throwing boulders, buddy. I don't, you know, I'm not. That tweet was especially <laughs> magnificent, and I think it deserves a reward. Don't you, so Candace too. Bailey? Yes, Kevin well, Pereira. How about this? Sounds of Star Wars, but from Lucas Books. You can just punch in one of over 250 sounds from the movie and hear it like this Jawa. <laughs> give, it, give it a second. We'll get to the magic. Here we go. <clears throat> Wait for it. Yes. Congratulations. If you want to be a part of the show and end up on our Twitter wall, tweet us at AOTS or use the hashtag AOTS. Still ahead, we plow right through today's epic fail. There's a snow loose on the way. Uh oh. Would you choose sex over? Coming up tomorrow on an all new Attack of the Show. Ghost Megan Rath from Being Human will be live in our studio. Then, Morgan Webb unveils the nominees for the 14th Annual Interactive Achievement Awards, the Oscars of Gaming, on Game Break. And we've set the world record for largest and smallest NES controllers. But tomorrow, we'll attempt to get the record for world's largest. You'll have to watch to find out. See you tomorrow. I want to know what that question mark was. I know you do. You'll have I to see to tomorrow, Kevin. Well, can I just ask the producers tonight? They won't tell you. Oh, okay. Guess what? What? We found the first rocky planet outside our solar system. Oh, oh hey. You know what that means? We can blow it up. Oh. Every year we make new discoveries about the worlds in the sky, and though 2011 has just begun, several findings have already been made. First up, scientists are one step closer to solving the mystery of which came first. No, not the chicken or the egg. The galaxy or the supermassive black hole. Typically, at the center of every galaxy is a supersized black hole. But scientists have never been able to determine if the galaxy led to the creation of a black hole or vice versa. However, researchers at the University of Virginia recently found a giant black hole in the center of a baby galaxy called Hanais 210. Based on this discovery, scientists now believe that supermassive black holes form first, driving the formation of the galaxies around them. This find will give researchers a view of how galaxies are created and how black holes evolve. Speaking of discoveries, bust out the champagne. We found the building blocks of life on Mars, 34 years ago. When the Viking probe landed on Mars back in 1976, it hit pay dirt as it found trace amounts of perchlorate, an oxygen-busting compound in the soil. However, this material was dismissed as contamination from Earth. But now, research suggests it was actually organic material found by Viking in the Martian dirt. This does not mean biological life has been found, but scientists are hopeful despite the 20-year gap that they will in fact find life on our red brother. From Mars, we head out to the great beyond where NASA's Kepler satellite has found the first rocky planet outside of our solar borders. At this point, hundreds of planets have been found, but they are typically gas giants, much like our own Jupiter. However, this exoplanet named Kepler-10b is not only the first rocky exoplanet, 
but it's also the smallest found beyond our system. It measures about 1.4 times the size of Earth, but is 20 times closer to its star than Mercury is to our Sun. This puts it outside of the habitable zone, the orbit a planet must have for liquid water to be on the surface, which means the chance of finding life there is practically non-existent. This is the first milestone for the Kepler mission, and NASA scientists hope it will soon lead to the discovery of Earth-like planets. Rocky planets, organic molecules, and supermassive black holes. We may not have discovered the keys to the universe, but every small step is a giant leap for mankind. Fail. Now, the entire country, country has been ravaged by a snowmageddon. That's no surprise. But mm -hmm. thankfully, snowplow drivers across America have come to the rescue. Except for this plowmeister, who will probably need a rescue himself. Way to clear the roof of mm -hmm. snow and roofing. Lo siento, <laughs> Señor Plow. <laughs> Thanks to Chris Gore and to Utah.